Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you watched the show before, we cover a variety of topics, from man overboard to marine insurance, and the general idea is to provide you with some information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun in the water. Now, every now and then, we take a little tributary, and that's the case today. We're up here in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, at the New England Vintage Boat and Car Auction. And the proceeds of this auction are going to go to the New Hampshire Boat Museum. So it's, it's a really cool event. And uh, to tell us a little bit more about the museum and the event itself is the executive director, Martha Cummings. Welcome, Martha. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you again. Thank Thanks you. so much for coming. Thank you very much. We've got a really cool event here today. But before we get into it, can you share a little bit more about the New Hampshire Boat Museum and a little bit more about the event? Absolutely. So the New Hampshire Boat Museum was founded in 1992 mm -hmm. by a group of enthusiastic vintage and classic boat collectors mm -hmm. who saw the need to preserve the boating history, boating heritage of uh, on the fresh waterways of New Hampshire. Okay. And uh, we've since grown quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We're now located in Wolfboro. Yeah. And we have a wonderful collection of vintage boats, motors, classic boats, canoes, kayaks, and sort of everything in between. <laughs> the whole gamut. Um, yeah, so it's pretty neat. Um, we also have a lot of experiential, hands-on programs mm -hmm. that we do at the museum yeah. that continue to promote that heritage of okay. boating. Mm -hmm. So we have a boat building course for adults and youth. Mm -hmm. um, our adult class is running right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. We have a community sailing, learn to sail program okay. for youth and adults and that's a great partnership yes. between the town of Wolfboro and the Boat Museum. We've taught over 2,000 kids wow. in that program wow. since yeah. it started. Uh, we also have a great lecture series in the summer mm -hmm. covering all varieties of topics on lakes, rivers, boating, fishing, right. <laughs> how to care for, you know, the lakes. Right. So right. Where does it's the pretty event, neat. Where does the event fit into the picture? It's a so fundraiser. The event, kind of, yeah. This event here is a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. It's our major fundraiser of the season. We're excited to be across the street this year at the Nick. It helps us spread out a little bit more. Yes, yes. Um, and it's the Nick Recreation Park that's our neighbor here. Yeah. Um, and so we have a great selection this year of boats and motors and cars and boat mobilia. And They're all going to be auctioned up. They are all going to go. Yeah. So Excellent. we're hoping everybody you know, came to buy, came to find that unique um, boat, that unique uh, boat mobilia gift. So, yeah. Yes, I'm sure we got that. Well, listen, there's a lot of interesting boats here, and I want to tape some of them and then hook up with Absolutely. one of their experts to do a little description. Yep. So why don't I go ahead and do that and then reconnect at the end of the show? Sure. All right. That'd be great. Good. Have fun. Thank you. Well, this is an interesting boat here at the show today. It's a 1931 Chris Craft. It's 24 foot triple cockpit and um, Chris Craft started building boats a long time ago, 1881. Chris Smith started started the operation there in the Detroit area and then uh, 1924 Chris Craft was actually kind of formed if you will and their original target was uh, sleek racing boats for wealthy patrons. So really high-end stuff and in the 20s and the 30s, they started moving into the mass market, trying to bring the cost of the boats down through assembly line techniques and that sort of thing. Um, Martha, what, what do you have for information on this particular boat we're looking at? Well, this particular one is one of the most popular and valuable of those pre-war mm -hmm. Chris Crafts mm -hmm. uh, with the upswept deck model. And yeah. this one is in pristine condition. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, one might have thought during the Great Depression that Chris Craft production would have ground to a halt, but uh, sales, though sales were affected, uh, a lot of Chris Craft customers who bought this particular boat, uh, most of which really could afford to buy this boat. Okay. And this boat features a new double layer, uh, three millimeter, 52,000 uh, 5200 bottom, which mm -hmm. eliminates leaking, and a recent Crusader 350 horsepower V8 engine, which can push <laughs> the boat at 40 miles an hour. Uh huh. Okay. And here's another uh, Chris Craft. This is a Cavalier. This is a 1959 Cavalier runabout, 
it's interesting because at that time, Chris Kraft was interested in re reaching the budget conscious boater. And so they created these two divisions. One was a regular Chris Kraft, one was Cavalier. And the Cavaliers were made with plywood veneer, right. which made it a less expensive boat and, uh, and a pretty fast boat. Uh, they made a variety of sizes, a lot of ones, 15, 17 foot, that sort of thing. What can you tell us about this boat here? Well, this boat here is a 283 cubic inch, 185 horsepower V8 engine. So mm -hmm. yes, it is fast, yeah. uh, good uh, for 42 miles per hour out there on the lake. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, normally, yeah, a plywood boat would not last as long as a plank boat, but this particular Cavalier shows how proper care can extend the life of any boat. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful boat. Yeah, it is a beautiful boat. This is a, oh, I don't know, interior shot um, showing the wraparound windshield, which was kind of a, that was, you know, a new technology back in those days. And see with the steering wheel here and uh, seating for three, the, the captain and a couple here on the, uh, the port side. And then see the engine box here. It has, a, like you say, a pretty hot motor in it. Those are a very popular in Corvettes, 283s. And then uh, as we pan back, uh, you see it's got seating and so this is typically a ski boat mm. and uh, 006 was uh, every boat had a story behind it so I'm sure there was a story there <laughs> that was a that's a nice boat well this next boat here is a century it's a 1971 resorter and, and these guys started building a long time ago too 1926 and they moved to Michigan early on stayed there for 60 years and they were very well known in the early years for speed. They held the speed record in 1930s. They uh, came up with a slogan, thoroughbred or boats, hmm. uh, because they tended to be on light construction with big engines in them. What can you tell us about this boat? Well, it has a big engine, that's for sure. It's 318 cubic inch, 225 horsepower V8 mm -hmm. Chrysler mm -hmm. uh, motor engine. And this one is in this boat is in immaculate condition with a perfect motor and interior and exterior restored by white mountain fiberglass including new stringers new floor new upholstery and a new all grip paint yeah i remember so, this boat I, this is a, seeing this earlier today this is just a really well refinished boat um getting a little different windshield here from the one we just saw mm -hmm. squared off with a frame on it uh, very luxurious. These centuries are very luxurious in contrast to some of the other boats. And a lot of upholstery, big ski ring here in the center mm -hmm. for skiing with that motor you were just great, talking great about. Great ski boat. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of open area, kind of a utility configuration here. And then as the camera pans back, uh, you see a ladder. So these guys are used to getting in and out of the water on a regular basis. And that's a nice thing to have if you have to do that. This is another very interesting boat here. This is a, a Sportsman 1954, Chris Craft Sportsman Utility. And we just talked a little bit about Chris Craft and some of the things they did in the early years. Whether it was mass production assembly lines. Mm -hmm. They introduced a lot of uh, interesting manufacturing techniques. This particular boat has some background to it, doesn't it? It does. Uh, you know, this is the, the famous 22-foot Chris Craft Sportsman. Some people call it the U-22. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, one of the most popular utilities ever made by Chris Craft. Now, this boat, which is called the Loon, was sold by Irwin Marine in Laconia, New Hampshire in 1953. And it's been on Lake Winnipesaukee ever since. Mm. Uh, the bottom is original, so it needs soaking in the spring, but okay. it doesn't leak after that. And the motor is a newer model, Chris Craft, 283 cubic inch uh, V8 oh. that runs flawlessly. Okay. And the interior and exterior have been restored. I mean, it really is a beauty. It sure is a beauty. Yeah, this this side view here shows us some of the hardware up on the front deck of these old ones. Look at the spotlight up there, and that looks probably original. And then we got the the chrome on the windshield, um, seating for it looks like three here mm -hmm. up front, and then some deck chairs there in the back. A lot of room in this boat. That's kind of interesting yeah. to note that. Take your friends out. Take your friends out. It was all double plank mahogany, which we can see here, the traditional 
um, approach to construction. And then, of course, the, the famous name, right? The loon. Mm -hmm. The loon, yeah. That's one that sticks in your memory. Well, here's another Chris Craft. Again, Chris Craft was very popular over the years. And uh, this is a um, 1956, 19-foot Capri model. And uh, some of the things I think, this was replacing the Riviera line, had the wraparound windshield. That was a little different. It had the clipper bow. Sometimes mm -hmm. they used to call this the bullnose bow. And you can see at the top here where the, the hull and the deck join, it's kind of bulbous, for yeah. lack of a better way of putting it. And that was really a trademark of these boats. I think it's a really pretty design. What, what do we know about this one? Well, first off, it is in excellent condition and mm -hmm. original condition. Mm -hmm. uh, it features the small KLC engine for fuel economy and mm -hmm. low maintenance mm -hmm. while still delivering a decent speed of around 35 miles per hour. Mm, that's pretty good. This boat has only had two owners since new, and it's only been on Lake Winnesquam and Big Squam Lake, which oh, is pretty cool. That is cool. Now, one thing to note is the excellent varnish and mm -hmm. exterior paint, as well as the interior upholstery Beautiful. and dash panel. It's got so, the two-tone yeah. two varnish job up here. Beautiful. The planking, yeah. Can we get the wraparound windshield, the instrumentation? So it's like a, it looks like a red interior there. Yeah, that's a very, very sharp boat. It's a runabout configuration. Mm -hmm. People have the separate cockpits. This boat has a certain, a nice lines to it, doesn't it? A nice flow to it. Really it really does. Yeah. That yeah. great sort of mid-century modern. Yeah, yeah. It's almost an Art Deco thing yeah, going on here. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Well, here's another one. This is a Formula. This is kind of rare. This is a 1965 17-foot Formula Junior and. People remember Formula, the 233, which is a 24-footer, was very, very popular. This one here is more unknown. This was part of the original group that Don Arano, a very famous racer, sold to Thunderbird Boats. And apparently this was not supposed to go with the rest of the designs, and it did. Um, so the original designers of this boat, which were uh, Walt Walters and Jim Wynn, they went back and they redesigned the Donzi 16-foot ski sporter, which is a very high-performance boat, too. So this is a, a pretty rare bird. Do we know anything else on this particular model? Yeah, on this one, it was originally powered by a small block Chevy uh, engine, and uh, but now this boat has a new V6 4-point liter uh, 4.3 liter Mercruiser, mm -hmm. which uh, pushes this little puppy at 4, 54 miles per hour yeah. um, with a three blade prop. Wow. So that, that moves along. That's pretty fast. Uh, the hull is in original condition and the interior is new. Mm -hmm. uh, the interior is configured with a driver's seat and a lounge seat for a second passenger or a ski observer. So. Okay, right. Because this mm -hmm. looks like a very popular ski boat design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty boat. It's got some different lines to it. And we pan back here, we see that new power that you were talking about, the updated power. Uh, and it's it got an interesting stern to it, like a, mm. almost a barrel back stern here. Very, uh, very pretty and very unusual boat. Now this next boat here is a 1982 19-foot fiberglass Riva. Now, some people may know a little bit about these, but they were started back in 1869 in, in Italy, and they started mm -hmm. with fishing boats, and they eventually progressed to mahogany wood speed boats. And they, the, one of the descendants, the original founder, toured the world, looking at boat factories to get the latest in technology. Mm -hmm. and, and his goal, Carlos Riva, was to create a very dependable, high-end boat and, and provide service facilities throughout the world to service these boats. And the reputation was built on mahogany boats, the, yeah. the attention to detail, the tolerances, the amount of varnish they put on them. Um, so this one actually kind of rides on that reputation to a certain extent. What do we know about this boat here? The one, one of the more interesting boats at the, at the auction this year, it was uh, one of the tenders aboard a 250-foot mega yacht of mm -hmm. perfume magnet Coco Chanel. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so, and over the years the yacht was sold and this Riva ended up in Miami, owned by Bernie Little, millionaire beer distributor. 
Um, it's been fully restored mm -hmm. and complete with VHF radio, Raymarine electronics, stereo GPS, computer hookups, etc. And it's powered by an immaculate 210 horsepower Crusader V8 engine. Oh. Now, rumor has it, if you take this Riva out onto the lake on mm -hmm. a calm night, you can still get the scent of Chanel Number no. 5 wafting in the air. Wow. Well, this is another boat. This is a little different boat. This is a Lyman. Totally different. Totally yep. different. Yeah. 1957 Islander. Now, Lyman's uh, were considered, quote unquote, work boats when they were first um, started production back in the late 1800s. And they were considered that because they were painted hull as opposed to a bright hull. They were clinker built as opposed to planked. And they tended to be very roomy and very... Um, they had a different hull design than the boats at that time. Mm. This made them very popular with fishermen and hunters and that sort of thing. Um, what do we know about this boat? Well, this is an 18-foot lapstrake islander mm -hmm. in excellent condition. It has uh, with full canvas and a deep entry hull configuration that you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Perfect for big lakes. Yeah. Um, all the Islanders feature the interesting and sometimes baffling side steering No, I see it here in the photograph, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, where the driver sits on the starboard side of the boat, either in the front of or behind the engine. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, now fishermen the, like that. Right, no, right. Did, yeah. Now the engine um, in, in this particular boat is one that's a Gray Marine 60 horsepower four-cylinder model designed for slow fishing or leisurely tours around mm -hmm. the lake. And then we see the round bottom yep. here in the transom. So, yeah, a Lyman collector would love this. Yes. Here's another boat. It's Chris Craft. Back to Chris Craft. They're very, very popular. This is a T-boat. Now, this one is um, 1966. So this is right on the cusp of when they started going from wood to fiberglass. Yep. And it's kind of a popular size. You start on a lot of Chris Crafts. They're 16, 18, 20 foot. And uh, as we look at it here, uh, we see uh, the wraparound windshield. And this one's a little little rougher than some of the other boats we've been looking at, right? Um, needs a little love. Needs a little love. But uh, uh, we can see the Chris Craft and Cindy in there. And, and we're at the transom already here. So um, this is a fixer-upper. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a restoration. A restoration. Definitely. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's look at this next one. This is another Chris Craft. Now this one is a 1932 18 foot split cockpit and uh, it was important, I thought it was important for us to talk about this boat today even though it's a little bit of it's covered because it was so old and, and it's kind of a rare mm -hmm. bird. Um, do you have any information on this boat to share with the viewers? Yeah, well, like you said, it's a rare boat, so it's a collector's boat, mm -hmm. um, and it is in very good condition. It's the famous th model 301 uh, with a powerful six-cylinder KBL engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been in the water and running this year, so it needs nothing. Just turn the key and go. Okay. Um, it's, again, another depression-built boat. Yes. Uh, this one was owned by a family who made their fortune in copper mining at the beginning of the 20th century. Oh. And there have been several owners over the past almost 90 years who have maintained the boat at a high level, replaced the bottom, rebuilt the motor, and mm -hmm. redo redid the interior. Yeah, so, this is beautiful in here. In yeah. The interior. And an example of the right way to to own a wooden runabout, if you will. That's a good point. So, yeah. 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 Didn't have much instrumentation there. Just a few no, gauges. They no. had a gear shift and a, a steering wheel with a throttle. They got the engine under the hatches here. We got that varnish work, right? That's it's beautiful. That's really nice. Yeah. 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 And here's the here's the aft cockpit here and. Again, here's the transom. It's got a little bit of tumble home. Very flat bottom to these boats. Mm. Mm. Fast, but a little rough. Now this one is, uh, we're back to the smooth riders, if you will. <laughs> this is a lineman, and this is a sleeper model, and, and we've talked about that a little bit. The lineman's built in Sandusky, Ohio. These guys actually learned a lot when they were building boats for the war effort and they learned how to use marine plywood as opposed to marine planking and mahogany planking and that they found that made a lighter stronger boat and they were actually able to source marine plywood after the war 
where other people couldn't get a hold of the mahogany. So oh, it's a very wow. interesting aspect of the build here. What do we know about this boat here? Well, this one has a 250 horsepower V8 mm -hmm. engine, which runs smoothly. And there's a custom-built bimini top, cockpit, and side curtains that oh, come yeah. with this boat. And yep. overall, the condition of this boat is, is really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those rare uh, 26 footers out there. Um, and so that's pretty cool. The vast majority of Lymans, as you know, were 21 feet and under. So right, it's right. Unusual. This is a margin boat. Look at all the mahogany in that boat. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's really nice. And it's that openness that attracted the people. They could go out in this boat and not run into each other. Just nice and open in there. Kind of like the pre uh, pre pontoon yes. sort of leisure and boat. Sort of, yeah, in yeah. a more elegant way, if I Much, can say yeah. that. Yeah, right, right. And here's the transom again. You see how they advocated the round stern, which is very smooth riding. Now here's here's an interesting boat that a lot of people probably aren't familiar with. This is a 1958 Aristocraft 13 foot Sea Flash. Now. These boats were originally built in Atlanta, Georgia, starting in 1947. Mm -hmm. And the, the original boat was a Typhoon, a two-seater, 12 foot long. And then they made the 13 foot Torpedo. And they got into racing boats in the 40s. Uh, the 50s, they made an outboard cruiser. And then the 56, we had this 13 foot Star Flash. Very interesting looking boat. Do you have any uh, details on this boat here? Yeah, so this 56 Aristocraft comes with a Mercury Mark 55, mm -hmm. 40 horsepower, uh, four-cylinder motor. Okay. And another complete identical motor as a spare. Oh, yeah? Uh, you, you know, on this one, you need calm water to really enjoy a boat like this. But yes. in the morning or early evening when on the water... Uh, when all the water is still, you will not have any more fun in yeah. a boat than like this one. That looks I like mean. fun. And they call it, this in mahogany, they call it ribbon stripe. And I think mm. they're alluding to the fact that there's a light layer in the middle, and then they've got the darker layer on the rest of the deck. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, they're still building basically this model, torpedo models, if you will, 12, 14, 16, and 18 foot down in Atlanta using the same jigs they did in the 1950s. Yep, they are. Isn't that something? Yeah, and a uh, little pan of that motor that you were talking about. You don't see many of these anymore. It's a rare bird. Now here's another rare bird. It's the uh, 1949 15 foot Ventnor. Now these guys have been around a long time too. They were started in 1902 by Adolf Apo. He had a small boat yard down in Ventnor, New Jersey, hence the oh. name. And these guys made, they were big into racing originally, and they did very well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, a, again, a, kind of a runabout configuration. What, what sort of information do we have on this? Well, this Ventnor is a pleasure runabout mm -hmm. and is immaculate with a totally rebuilt engine that has zero hours on it. A major hull restoration, including new frames, bottom, side, stem, chines, and fuel tank. Wow. Uh, the, ga the gauges and wheel upholstery, flooring, and hardware, <laughs> those are all original. Okay, all right. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic boat. Yeah, yeah, like I say, most people don't know of them, but they, to people there in the know, they're a very fast boat. Um, interesting configuration here, looks like they had a weak set of ga gauges. Uh, obviously, they need a steering wheel. It's got the kind of a, I don't know, kind of a runabout utility configuration going on yeah. here with some sort of cockpit, and then you yep. get the utility box in the middle there. Uh, probably a very good ski boat, I would imagine. You know, and here's the pan back uh, seating for a number of your guests. It's kind of a typical setup there. And then here's the the stern view, and again. Uh, Interesting mahogany and, and a fairly flat stern. Uh, get a lot of speed out of this boat without a big engine. Now here's another boat. This is a 1952 Chris Craft, 17 foot special runabout. We've talked a little bit about Chris Craft so far. Um, in this time frame, they were making a lot of boats. In 1953, they made 123 different models. Oh wow. So they were very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And this was a nice size. The 17 foot was a nice size. 
double plank mahogany. Uh, what do we know about this boat? Well, this one truly is in spectacular condition. Uh, it has a new uh, 5200 uh, bottom, new transom, cut water, rub rails, and all hardware re-chromed. Wow. And to top it off, 12 coats of varnish. Wow, yeah. Um, imagine the patience to apply <laughs> that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, this boat will hit 36 miles per hour with a smooth ride and definitely heads turning as you drive by. Oh, I believe it, yeah. Um, and this one, the motor, I should say, is a Model K engine, a Chris Craft Model K engine turning oh. out 95 horsepower. That was pretty but, good back then. Yeah, but it's a beautiful, beautiful runabout. Oh my god, yeah. Look at the varnish work on this and, and the cockpit there. They got the gauges, separate gauges mounted into the, into the mahogany dash. Um, and then you've got, this is kind of a hybrid between a runabout with a uh, cockpit there, and then we've got a utility. Mm -hmm. We've yes. got the engine box back here. So it's an interesting configuration. Again, plenty of room. Uh, I like the mahogany on red and uh, Topsy, kind of an interesting name. Well, Martha, it's hard to believe, but uh, our time for the show has come to a close. A lot of interesting boats here today, boats that you don't normally see. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close it up? Yeah, well, first off, thank you so much for coming today. Mm -hmm. It was a great day. We do this every year. Yep. So this time of year, come on to the, the auction if come you missed it. Come to the event. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we have a great event coming up, though. If you, if you did miss today's event, we yep. have our boathouse tour yes. on August 8th. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great sightseeing, historic uh, tour on Lake Winnipesaukee yes. in Meredith. Yes. You can ride in a vintage boat. Right. You can ride in an antique car, or you can do a self-drive if okay. you'd like as well. All right. So that's a great one. Right. And I invite you to come to the museum. Yes. We have wonderful exhibits. We're doing a racing on the waterways of New Hampshire right. this year right. because of our regatta coming up in September. Yeah. Um, and many other experiential programs. So I invite you to look at our website, nhbm.org, and see what else we have going on. Perfect. Thank Thanks, you, Martha. Paul. And thank you, smart boating viewers, for tuning in. If you have comments or questions or input, reach us at www.smartboatingus.com. Thank you.